Apple just dropped new iPad Pros and new MacBook Pros. So if you are excited, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel. Let's talk about the new M5 generation of chips from Apple. So we now got three new products with the new M5 chip. We've got a new iPad Pro, a new MacBook Pro 14 inch and the new Apple Vision Pro. All of these devices now feature the M5 chip, which is a new chip from Apple that focuses on new performance on AI. Yes, this chip focuses on being much faster on neural engine tasks and AI tasks. What tasks do you ask? Well, simple. Do you use any program that implies with it AI? For example, if you render images with AI, if you edit images with AI, if you edit videos, do masks with AI. All of these tasks will be much, much faster with the M5 chip. On the iPad Pro, Apple is experiencing 40% faster GPU gains. Also, on the iPad Pro specifically, all the base models of the iPad Pro, the 256 and 512GB models, now come with 12GB of RAM. Before, you had to buy the 1TB or 2TB options to get that. Nowadays, you can buy whichever iPad Pro you want with the M5 chip and it comes with 12GB of RAM. Also, the Thunderbolt port on the iPad Pro can now output to 120 frames per second for a 4K monitor. So, much, much better, or obviously cooler, because now you can have 120Hz on your own monitors. While this iPad Pro, which is the M4 generation, cannot do that. This is super cool, and it was something I was complaining about on my head or with this iPad Pro whenever I use it on a monitor. I thought, hmm, Apple needs to fix this. They just did, with a new generation of the M5 iPad Pro. If that was a bummer to you, now you got your fix with a new generation. But I would say it's a very, very small upgrade. These upgrades, they don't deserve anything new. They don't deserve an event. So this was, I would say, a very silent one. And I'm glad Apple didn't launch this on an event, neither a press release. This was a very, very cool way to do it, silently. Well, the new generation of M5 MacBook Pros come with more battery life, according to Apple. It reaches up to 24 hours of battery life. So more efficient chips, more powerful chips, and yes, compared to M1, is six times faster on AI. M1, which came out in 2020. So I would say that this M5 chip is a very, very small upgrade for all of these devices. The iPad Pro comes with some hardware upgrades together, comes with a new RAM, and comes with a better Thunderbolt port, but I would say that even with that, it's a very, very, very tiny upgrade. So this is more like news of the day, but no one cares about it tomorrow. As for the Apple Vision Pro, and here, well, here is something different because Apple releases a new strap, a more comfortable head strap. And this was one of all complaints that people were saying. The biggest one was the strap was not comfortable enough for long periods of time. Now we got a new strap for the Apple Vision Pro. We also got better renders and we got more battery life. So who cares about the Apple Vision Pro? I don't have it. I never reviewed it. I don't really care about it. So let's forget about it for a few minutes, years, or forever. Let's not talk about why I do believe you should wait for buying a new generation of M5 chips currently. I think these are awesome, but I wouldn't say for you to buy it right now. I don't think you should buy the M5 MacBook Pro simply because it's better off AI. Don't do it. These new upgrades, this new generation of M5, they will be noticed a lot in the next generation of the M5 Pro or the M5 Max, because I do believe these AI task improvements, they will come very, very handy on the next generation of Pro chips. Because whenever you video edit, whenever you do code, whenever you do something very intensive in power, you need, you need the Pro chips. You need the better GPU, you need the, the faster GPU performance, and you don't buy the base model M5. So I do believe that these new AI tasks, which are integrated in your computer, video editing, 3D rendering, all of that, you buy a more powerful computer. If you are using AI, on the web, you don't need the M5 chip. You don't need the M2, the M3, the M4. You can use the M1 or even Intel chips. Although I would require you to get an M1 because the Intel sucks. If you use the M1 on the web, it will be as fast as your M5 on the web. Why? Because you are using anyone else's computer. You are using a server. So you don't need to buy the faster M5 chip for AI. This is pure marketing gigs. This will be very useful for those that are 3D rendering or even creating masks on a video, I sometimes require more RAM power, I sometimes require more AI power and more neural engine power on my base model M1 Max MacBook Pro, but because I'm editing videos, not because I'm doing some AI task that lots of people do like using ChatGPT or using Notebook LM from Google. No, I'm not doing that and I don't require more power for AI on my chips. No, that's from a server that's on the web. So don't fall on this marketing trick 
The M5 will be faster, yes, but for in-house AI, not for your web-focused AI, if you understand what I mean. Another upgrade came for the MacBook Pros that now feature Wi-Fi 7 instead of the Wi-Fi 6E. That's an upgrade. But again, don't buy these MacBook Pros. This is my M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro, but don't buy these current M5 MacBook Pro 14-inch because you think it will be a complete revolution for your AI tasks. If you are doing AI tasks on the web, your current computer is just fine. If you are not, if you are doing 3D rendering, AI masks on your video editor, in your favorite video editor, is not worth ditching your M4 Pro or even your M3 Pro or M2 Pro for an M5 chip. This is not powerful enough. It does not have GPU performance that will match your needs. So I think this is still just a taste for Apple is going to release in the next chips. I think that this M5 chip makes a lot of sense on the MacBook Air. Let's see what Apple does with the M4 MacBook Air currently, because it's been one year and some months that Apple has released this computer. Maybe in the next couple of three, four months, Apple will release the M5 MacBook Air, or even during next month on the November timeline, they will simply drop the new MacBook Air. I'm not sure, but with this new M5 MacBook Air, more battery life, more efficiency makes sense because we are going to get 30 hours of battery life? I don't know. But with the M5 MacBook Pro, I think that currently it does not make that much sense. So buying M5 MacBook Pros by now, it's not a good option. While with the M5 iPad Pro, yes, this is my M4 iPad Pro, and it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it works so, so well. Currently with the new iPad OS 26, Apple has improved a lot the iPad experience and I understand what Apple wants from an iPad right now. So I think that getting this new generation instead of the M4, the price has been the same. Apple kept the same prices from the M5 even to the M5 iPad Pro, the M5 MacBook Pro. So I would say that you're getting now the M5 iPad Pro, you won't notice the difference between the M4 and M5, but if you are getting now your iPad Pro, you are getting the best one. So you are getting the best Thunderbolt port, the best chip, and obviously getting 40% better GPU graphic performance, getting ba more battery life, getting more RAM, and getting a new Thunderbolt port, it's obviously better, but upgrading from the M4 to the M5 does not make any sense, if you know what I mean. So these were very, very small upgrades. Apple launched them without an event, without a press release, without anyone releasing videos on them. So you understand that these are very, very small and iterative upgrades. But I need to make a video, guys, to show you what is new from Apple. And no, I won't be buying any of these computers or any of the iPads because I just think it's ridiculous to review them. And so let me know below if any of these products interest you. And of course, while you're there, drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.